G4, G9. Uh, Julian Ziegler Hunt, his older brother Corey, delivered their results on the Minsky Circle algorithm. Uh, here's a couple of pictures from that era. That's a little before. Uh, here we are with the ineffable creator of all life. Uh, and on the right, oh, I don't know whose side that would be. Yeah, that's on the right, uh, is uh, Neil Bickford, who had five finals this week and couldn't join us, but he figures large in this talk. Uh, and here is a rare picture of the elder brother, Corey. And uh, they found enough stuff that was interesting enough that we actually wrote a book. And that book was on a DVD that was given out as a uh, 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 exchange gift. And now we'll uh, do a little reviewing of the Minsky Circle algorithm. And uh, I guess we don't need this. <clears throat> uh, Marvin just died a couple of weeks ago, unfortunately. He had been noodling, I guess, late 61, early 62, typing tiny programs directly into the memory of his PDP-1 computer, just trying to get some crazy squiggles. Instead, he got this rock-solid, almost perfect circle. And, uh, and it was somewhat puzzling why. And, <clears throat> but it was the, the number of things undiscovered at this time, or that, was, that took many years, took the Ziegler Hunts kids to discover this, is amazing. Uh, but what's interesting about this algorithm is each point is simply computed from the previous point, no additional state. And the rule is uh, from its x-coordinate, subtract a little of its y. And from its y-coordinate, add a little of its new x. That new x makes this recurrence exactly invertible. In other words, even though the floor function destroys information, multiplication might not be precise. Nevertheless, you can invert this perfectly, assuming addition and subtraction are inverse. Uh, now, what that means is we have four numbers, the starting x, starting y, and the two multipliers, delta and epsilon, that go in these floors. And <clears throat> those four numbers, uh, e each set of four numbers, uh, defines a trajectory. And <clears throat> because of the reversibility of this recurrence, the, the trajectory must loop back to the very first point or blow up and never loop back to any point because it's invertible. It can't, it can't fork. So uh, these, these four numbers define a trajectory. The space of these four numbers is, I think, as complex and as fascinating as the Mandelbrot set. <clears throat> now, before we... Uh, oh, uh, Rohan's already... OK, great. Uh, uh, before we go into a couple of examples of the of the Minsky algorithm, let's remove the floor functions and see what the, the simplified mathematics pr produces. Namely, uh, if we remove the floor functions, this is exactly solvable linear recurrence. And <clears throat> uh, in fact, it will draw an ellipse as long as absolute value of delta times epsilon is less than 4. And so hopefully now, Rohan, they can switch to Rohan's screen, and he will show you, uh, <clears throat> namely starting at point 0, 0,8 and two peculiar rational numbers what this thing will draw uh, if you just run this for consecutive n. So uh, there you go. Oh, beautiful. OK. So uh, now the, uh, uh, the green ellipse is the raw output from the algorithm. It's much less round than Minsky's first one because it, the delta and epsilon are larger than Minsky's. Uh, the perfect circle is the result of a skew transformation, which we are always interested in when we restore the floor functions. So now let's run that one again, but now we'll restore the floor functions. And you can see, notice it says 8 comma 0 up there. And 8. Yeah, OK. So now what, look what happened to our circle. What happened to our circle? Oh, no. OK, <laughs> calm down. Uh, the, uh, OK, so, you, so what happened to our circle? Well, it got all fuzzy. But it somehow, miraculously, in 202 steps, return exactly to 0, 0,8. And that's what basically what's going to happen. So now uh, we'll try something else. We'll try a different uh, starting position, different multipliers. And, uh, and we'll turn off uh, the, the floors for a while. And then we'll turn them on and see what we get. So here we go, making uh, you know, the exact ellipse, quote unquote exact. And then after, how, how many is this going to be? About 200, 100, I'm pretty 200. sure this one's the 202. Uh, two, 220, OK. Yeah, 220. OK, so then now turn on. Turn on the floors and let it run from there. And you can see that it's not a fuzzy circle. It's, a, it's just a, you know, a webbed quincunx. All right. I mean, what does that have to do with circles? It's an icosagon. All right. So anyway, um, now let's do that same thing, but stop at 202 rather than 220. So we're going the same, the same starting points and multipliers uh, until we get yeah, to 202. OK, well, that was 202 plus 1. All right. Let's see what happens. Okay, so now cut this loose, and we'll see 
one of the worst circles I have ever drawn in my life. Uh, oh, what, oh there, yeah, here we go. Oh, no, this is. Oops. What uh, happened? I think I set something up wrong. Oh, well, we still have four squares. <laughs> uh, yeah, what? <laughs> anyway, yeah, it, it, this was supposed to draw four squares. I don't know yeah, what that is. Yeah, but these are now uh, four square. But now these are four rectangles. Uh, All right. Uh, so now, can we do the Fibonacci one? Is that one set up right? The Fibonacci one? Yeah, the, the uh, yeah one that 34, 55. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Perfect. OK. So this is 34 and 55, uh, Fib 9, Fib 10. Uh, multipliers are basically related to the golden ratio. And, uh, and yeah, let it rip. And, uh, uh, and now it appears to be you know, going around in a, in a pentagon. But in fact, what it's going to really do is draw five fractal pentagrams. This is just one simple recurrence, uh, which in, under normal circumstances makes circles. Uh, now, uh, let's see, did we do anything else besides those? Uh, OK, I guess now at this point, we want to switch back. But, but remember that pattern is going to come back. Uh, we'll switch back to the. Uh, to my screen, yeah, and uh, these are just a few of the other, quote, circles, unquote, uh, that you can get from just changing those four numbers. This particular one is kind of interesting. It has four million points in it, but it, but it loops. The colors are just mod six because it had a roughly six-fold symmetry. Uh, and uh, here are the bigger Fibonacci numbers, same multipliers. We just get further apart fractal pentagrams with more points in them. Uh, and now, suppose we were to use uh, the parameters that would ordinarily just produce an eccentric heptagon without the floor functions. When we add the floor functions, we get a nice rug to put on our floor. Uh, and uh, it turns out that the idea is you just color uh, each trajectory according to its period. And you can get an idea of the enormity of this space because this is just part of the infinite xy plane that is you know, created by this particular pair of multipliers. And it's, it's endless. So uh, now here is the motivation for that first, uh, those first two pure ellipse and funny looking quincunx that we showed you. Namely, uh, here is everything that happens for a certain small neighborhood of deltas and epsilons, assuming that we start at x0 and y8, which we did. And we chose our delta and epsilon to be in this red rectangle. And what that does is it always produces the exact same pattern that we saw, the same fuzzy circle. If we had simply increased epsilon a little bit, got up here in the 224, then we've seen, we would have seen a fuzzy circle with, with uh, 22 more points in it. <clears throat> but what would have happened if we put right on this crack? Well, we investigated this part of the crack, and it was always period 199. But what period do we get on this part of the crack? Bat shirt. Uh, and could we switch screens, please? There's a bat shirt. Uh, <laughs> namely, uh, we found, and now can we switch back, uh, the, uh, there were points in this, on this diagram, in that crack, that ran period of 18 trillion. There were others that we, were bigger than that. We couldn't even, you know, it took a week to, to calculate. We couldn't map this part of that segment. Over here, everything was nice and tame, although strangely broken up. The worst thing that happened was 17,000. Uh, so this gives you an idea of just how weird uh, this Binsky space is. Now here's another uh, uh, four million point loop. And uh, here's one with fewer, but look at the, look at the difference in shape and texture. Uh, and this is an overhead view of the Israeli DOD building. Uh, and uh, uh, then, OK, now we come to the serious stuff. Uh, start with 1 and 0 for x and y, these two rational numbers. What does it do? Well, we ran it a while, and you know, it was just hanging around 0. And it turns out you can run it backwards by just switching x and y and delta and epsilon. But we ran it 47,000, and it looked like this, where the green is the raw, and, and that's the circularized. And well, that's kind of interesting, but the Ziegler Hunts kids were interested in what it actually, how long it actually ran. So at an enormous you know, cost in electricity, um, they ran the thing 100 trillion in both directions uh, because it's reversible and we had two computers. If we had more computers, we didn't know what to do with them. If, I don't know if you can see this bottom scale or not, but down here, uh, this is times 1 billion. So that's says 50,000, it's really 50 trillion. Uh, no, 50 billion, sorry. No, 50 trillion. Uh, so anyway, um, uh, then we were completely unable to figure out how to bring more computers to bear on this problem. And our missing Neil Bickford, just this year, figured out how to parallelize this uh, operation. I, we don't have time to explain it. 
But as soon as he heard it, our own Tom Rokiki fired up God knows how many cores, uh, 1632, how many, you know? Uh, Tom, how many, how many cores? Oh, there's one four cores, come on. Uh, anyway, somehow, somehow by using nuclear-powered cores, uh, Tom was able to run the thing 2.5 quadrillion steps. Right here is the effort of the, uh, 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 of the Ziegler Hunts kids. And then, he, then Tom out, outdid himself and did 13 quadrillion steps. And you can see the radius has expanded out now to 10 million, uh, but it hasn't shown the slightest sign of, of looping. And will it or won't it loop? Uh, well, here's an example of one that did loop. And it's one of the reasons that we think that that one will eventually loop if we live long enough or quantum computers happen or something. Uh, because this one climbs, this, it spirals out this six rung ladder here. And when it gets far enough away from the origin, it stops feeling the floor function. The floor function is almost like it's not there. And it does all this elliptical stuff with, with a lot of hexagonal tracery. And then it does something remarkable. It fills in solid areas except for white tracery, okay, which means it's sort of leaving ways for itself to get back to the first point, which it has to do because it's reversible. So uh, anyway, this, was, uh, uh, this is why we are continually, okay, we call this, by the way, the Minsky stock index. Okay, so uh, the, uh, uh, now if we go on here, now we completely change gears. Here's the, here's the other piece of, of uh, Minsky news. There is a guy named Adam P. Goucher. He's a classmate of Julian over at Cambridge. He is scary. He's you know, maybe as smart as Turing. And he has pulled some stunts. And to show you two of those stunts, we need to have uh, Rohan's machine back on, or screen back on. Uh, where are you there? Oh, there you go. OK. Name, this is, okay, this is Goucher's Pi stunt. This is a life computer which actually computes the decimal expansion of pi without limit. All right. So th these are flotillas of, of, of gliders that are flying out there and adding a 4 onto the 3.1. OK. And, and Rohan is not drawing that with his pencil. OK. So uh, yeah. Now, uh, now, for the next stunt, Goucher stunt, uh, there, there's the two-bit sieve. Uh, and what this is, is this, this is a cellular automaton, 10 states, two non-void bits to start with, and it computes prime numbers. So go ahead and single step that, explain what it's doing a little bit. Two, okay. three, no four, five, no six, seven, good. Eight's already gone, goodbye nine, goodbye 10, hello 11, <laughs> okay, and so a bunch of stuff. And you'll notice remove twos, remove threes, remove fours, remove fives, remove sixes, and everything else. So anyway, uh, you may gather that Goucher is clever. Uh, so he did another clever thing. Um, namely, if we can have back to my uh, uh, screen again, uh, here is uh, the fractal pentagrams in a rug plot from the, uh, the Ziegler Hunts kids. And, uh, and as you can see, uh, everybody said, oh, I like that picture. Goucher said, oh, uh, that's the markings of Penrose tiling. And it was like incredible. Uh, if you just connect up centers of these pentagrams, uh, then by golly, you get an honest to God aperiodic Penrose tiling. And so the, here's this crazy little circle drawing thing, which turns out to do that. And that's my talk and our talk.